cells only. Now, as you can see, we got those pesky green arrows. And these arrows are Excel's way of telling us there's a message. There's a message here. There could be something off. And we do always want to go in here, best practice, and see what the message is. And in this case, it is looking at those numbers, the invoice numbers that we put in our cell, and it's saying, hey, I notice you put a number in your cell. However, up here, it's coded as a general number type. Do you want to go in here and store this instead of as text? Do you want to convert it to a number? Now, in this case, we're not going to be doing like mathematical equations based off an invoice number, right? An invoice number is more so stored as text if we think about it mentally. So what I'm going to do here is just highlight all of these. And if we want to remove all the green arrows at once or, you know, address them, maybe convert it to numbers, if they are all consecutive, like you see here, you can highlight them all at once and then come over to this little caution symbol and click either ignore the error or you can go in and convert it to a number if that's what you're looking to do. I'm going to click on ignore here. And now what we're going to do here is let's create a little drop down menu inside of our delivery status column here. And let's say we want our cells to say either delivered, shipped, or warehouse in a little drop down menu for each of these different items. What we can do here is leverage the data validation tool. So in order to do this, I'm going to first highlight the cells that we want to apply these drop-down menus to. And then we can come up on our data ribbon here and navigate over to this button here in the data tool segment called data validation. It's got the little green check mark and that little red cross out sign. And when we click on the drop down, we're going to want to select data validation. And now what data validation does, it is it essentially sets rules for the cell that the user has to abide by in order to insert content into the cell. So for example here, you can go in and set particular validation criteria. Maybe the data has to be a decimal or in the date format or a time. Maybe it has to be a whole number. In our case, we're going to select list because we have that list of our options that we want to select from the delivered and progress options there. So I'm going to now click on our source box, this little box that popped up. And when we click into it, we can then hop back into our workbook and highlight the different options that we want in our drop down menu, which I've written off in these cells over here. And it just went in and pulled those cell references for us. And now if I click on OK, we see we now have this little arrow that gives us our drop down menu options where we can go in and select either delivered, shipped or warehouse for these options. Now, a pro tip with this is when you are building some sort of model or something with drop down menu items, what I personally like to do is not include them like we see here on the main page. This I left here for explanatory purposes since we're learning here, but if you are building something out, best practice is to come down here, click the plus sign to create a separate sheet, and then you go in and put all of your different data validation items on one worksheet, and then you can hide it at the end so it's not in the end user's face where all the back end mechanics are for your workbook. And now lastly here, I wanted to show you how we can essentially make our cells format themselves. So here, let's say we wanted every time our cell said the word delivered for that cell to automatically turn green. So I'm not talking come up to the home ribbon and you know come to the fill bucket and click the green button. I want it to turn green automatically. This is where we can leverage something called conditional formatting. So in order to do this, I'm going to first highlight the cells I want to apply my conditional formatting to. And then we can come up here in the styles section to this big conditional formatting button where we have all different essentially rules that we can apply to our cell where it can be like, hey, if the cell criteria, the contents in the cell meets this rule, format it in this way. So in our case here, I'm going to do it this way through highlight cell rules and come over to text that contains where we can go in and type the word delivered 
and then select what formatting we want it to turn. So let's say we want, you know, green fill with dark green text for this example. However, you can go to custom format and select any formatting you'd like. I'm going to click on the green option here and click OK. And now in the area we highlighted, it will turn any instances of it green. And if I click over here and put a new one in, it will also continue to turn those green. So again, that is the conditional formatting button here on the home ribbon. And that brings us to the end of our lesson for today with our productivity tips for the everyday Excel user. A huge thank you again to the Global Excel Summit team for having me as a part of this event. I hope you're all having an amazing time at it and I'm sending all the good vibes your way. Have an amazing day, everybody.